Okay. We're probably most of us uh, uh, familiar to some extent with soil chemistry. And this is when you take a soil test and you uh, send it to a laboratory and you get it tested for, uh, usually the test that's done is a test for soluble uh, uh, elements. And uh, usually it's not tested for what's there, it's only tested for what's soluble. And we have the good fortune today to have Graham Lancaster back here uh, who runs a soil testing laboratory. It just so happens to be the soil testing laboratory of my choice anywhere in the world uh, because when we asked for a total test then uh, Brookside did like total calcium, magnesium, potassium, phosphorus but we wanted a total on iron, or we wanted a total on boron, or we wanted a total on these other things. And we were getting leaf tests that were an aqua regia digest, which is an extremely strong acidic solution that's used in the mining industry to assay ore samples. And it's the closest thing outside of a uh, mass spectrometer of doing a total test on a sample. And it's been used for a long time. Aaron Fried Pfeiffer used total tests in this fashion back in the 50s and 60s, or the 40s for that matter. So we said, well, well if you're going to do an aqua regia digest, why don't we just test for everything? You know, just like we do with the leaf test. And he said, oh, no worries. So, <laughs> so we've got the ability then to test not only for how much zinc shows up on this test, but how much is there total. That's actually a pretty useful thing because if we've got the zinc there in the soil, especially your legumes, can access it. If it's not there, then you know you have to build more zinc reserve into that soil. But why would you do it if it's already there? You don't know, scare farmers, but when we do totals, we throw a few elements in that we just look at ourselves. So we add in uranium, strontium, mercury, arsenic. <laughs> There's a bit of silver in some of them. Amazing how much uranium's in some of them. But it goes back to the story that all the elements are there. Yep. Um, maybe not in the concentration, concentrations they should be, but um, yeah, one day we'll be doing a lot more totals. Yeah, I've got a theory because fluorine is the single element in the periodic table that has no problem solubilizing silica. Can't keep it in a glass bottle because it'll soon be on the floor. Uh, <laughs> talk about solubilizing silica. Uh, and we know that certain soils, like for instance, the high plains in Texas, are fluoride rich soils. And this is where this whole idea of putting uh, fluoride in drinking water came from, is people in that area of Texas had really good, strong teeth and bones. But it was probably because of the silica that was working together with calcium in hardening those bones and not the fluoride. The fluoride was probably responsible for the access to the silica. By putting fluoride in our drinking waters, we're just about assuring that nobody gets the right dose because some people are going to avoid it like the plague and others are going to drink it with wild abandon and not know when they've overdosed. So, what we need to do is to have a national program to determine, this should be a CSIRO imperative, to determine what the target levels for fluoride would be in various soils and to test for these and to apply this aluminium smelting waste to those soils rather than putting it in the steel and plastic pipe water systems where it can't solubilize silica because there's not much of any of it there. So 
Here it is in the water table going through sand and gravel strata and picking up all the silica it needs and people drink it and get strong teeth and bones. But in our city water systems, there's not much evidence that it's all that great for our teeth and whatnot. And it may soften our brains. Uh, huh? Well, that's what I reckon. It's not the right way to get it. If we got it in our food chain because food was grown on soils that were, uh, that were supplied with fluoride if they were deficient, then we'd all get the proper dose. And we'd get an organic form as well. Couldn't we just take a little bit of 1080? Yeah, that'd be better. Huh. <laughs> 23 parts per million sodium fluoroacetate. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like chemical agriculture because if you're going to try to supply the plant's nutritive needs by putting it on in whacking doses, then you're going to have a roller coaster effect. You can't give it a little bit every day, which is what the plant needs. You can't fertilize that way. It's uneconomical and it's almost impossible to do that. Uh, <clears throat> with a chemical system. Whereas if you've got the biology of the soil supplying that little bit of, of uh, available nutrient every day, and most of it's locked up and it's just sort of like doling it out, then you've got a much better system that supplies the needs of the plant without all those hiccups. But anyway,